Blizzard has just released an absolutely massive buff and nerf change to the Overwatch PTR. Hey everyone, this is Dabacap, and today we're going to go over these changes and show just how much of an impact they could have for the future of Overwatch. All right, first let's go into the big one. Anna has gotten a major, major nerf. Blizzard has absolutely bent Anna over the barrel on this one. So let's just, let's just go through them. First of all, her biotic rifle damage has decreased from 80 to 60. Secondly, her biotic grenade damage was reduced from 60 to 30, and the impact healing was reduced from 100 to 50. So basically, her grenade uh, impact was cut in half. So obviously, this change is going to make Anna much less of a killer. And let's <laughs> let's be honest, she may be a, a support class, but she is brutal. She's savage. She can get kills left and right, especially on like a Pharah. Same thing with flinkers and divers, the type of characters who are supposed to be able to deal with Anna. You know, Tracer, Genji, Sombra, they actually kind of struggle with Anna because her damage output is so high. I mean, I really like playing Genji. I play Genji a lot, and I <laughs> I was often a little bit intimidated by Anna's just because I would try and get close to them, and that should be a matchup where I'm favored, but I often felt like I wasn't favored. Just if you take in the Biotic Grenade, which is basically impossible to miss. Impossible to miss. So if an Anna grenades herself, that's 100 healing. So that takes her from basically 200 health to 300 health over the course of a fight. Then you, in you include the fact that it's basically impossible to miss a Genji with a grenade because, of course, she throws it on the floor. She doesn't try to actually hit the Genji with it. You just throw it on the floor when you're both in range, and then you hit the Genji pretty much guaranteed. So that's 60 damage on Genji right off the bat. So it's not like a 200 health, 200 health even matchup. It's basically 300 health Ana versus 140 health uh, Genji. Or in Tracer's case a 300 health Anna versus a what 100 or I'm sorry 90 health Tracer it's just it's such an unfavorable matchup just in terms of the raw math there that it's it's not surprising that Anna's frequently killed Genjis and Tracers and other flankers Ferris too I mean Anna's damage output is so high I saw this <laughs> I saw this kind of funny graphic on Twitter where people were complaining about the differences between McCree and Anna about how well, like on paper when you when you compare Anna's damage and her kit to McCree's damage and his kit, it looks, it really does look like Anna's the better DPS. She, uh, her left clicks, her left clicks deal more damage. Her grenade has unlimited range. She has an auto kill shot with her sleep dart, which can pretty much kill anything. So it's, Anna's just, she's been so strong. She's been so popular at the higher ranks. So it's not surprising at all that she is getting these changes. Make her less of a powerhouse, less of a offensive, just juggernauts i'm not against healers doing lots of damage right i really like zenyatta zenyatta can really pump out damage especially with his discord orb that's fine it's just anna does she does it all right now in the in the in the current live version of the game she does everything she does as much damage as a lot of damage classes and she does she out heals a lot of the healing classes so i really think that she needs to be toned down a bit i think this is a fine change i think this will make her and the back line much more vulnerable to flankers which is kind of needed a little bit because you know when when healers dominate the game it means no death and that creates stagnant gameplay and that's no fun you want things to be shaken up by kills and damage and when you have an overly strong healer and tank meta as we saw in uh, the meta a, a couple months ago it just gets kind of dull and stagnant so i for one as <laughs> as a frequent genji player i for one support this change next up is junkrat junkrat got a major buff he is no longer hurt by his own explosions that means his tire doesn't kill him his uh his grenades don't kill him his total mayhem i mean it's obviously when you drop your tail total mayhem you're already dead but if you drop your total mayhem and you instantly get revived you know you might get hit by it so overall this will make junkrat much more i guess sort of balls out risky i don't care let's just charge head forward and throw grenades everywhere because i don't have to worry about being uh, being killed and of course you know we've all been killed by our own tire explosions because you pull the rip tire it suddenly turns a corner and you kill them and you kill yourself and it's just sort of a uh, net gain for the enemy team so now with these changes junkrat can be just completely aggressive and no longer caring about his own safety or his own health pool and really this is a great change because junkrat is one of the least popular least powerful characters in the game he is almost never picked at high level competitive play his grenades are so unreliable it's just sort of 
difficult to really justify him as a pick. But with this change, Junkrat can be less of like a, I'll stay in the back and just lob grenades blindly into the choke point or onto the payload or the point or whatever. And now he can, you know, maybe get into the, get up into the thick of it and throw around concussive grenades and traps and actually just be aggressive because he don't have to worry about blowing himself up. And he can, you know, now he can sort of kamikaze in and pull the rip tire on the top of the payload and blow everyone up without actually, you can remove the kamikaze part of his kamikaze explosions because he doesn't have to kill himself anymore. So hopefully this will make Junkrat a little bit more viable because Junkrat's a fun character. I like Junkrat. He's just, he's not very strong. You got to be honest with yourself. He's he's not a super strong character. He's not a super pick character. And this is a buff that will make him a little bit more in line with everyone else in the game. So I am all for this. Next up, we've got Arisa. <laughs> her, her gun magazine size was lowered from 200 to 150. So when Arisa went live on the PTR, I was like, oh, I'm going to try her out. Let, let's, you know, let's get some videos out. And I tried her and I, I pulled out her gun and I left clicked. And I was like, oh my God, this gun, this gun is so strong. I shoot forever. It's like, it's like having Bastion's turret on my arm. And then my brother got online and he, he tried out Arisa and I was like, hey man, what do you think about Arisa? And he was like, oh my God, her gun is ridiculous. <laughs> And then, then my buddy got online because he wanted to try out Arisa too, and he got on the PTR. And I was like, I was like listening to him, and I was like, "Hey, what do you think, man?" He was like, "This, this robot's gun is ridiculous." So I think the consensus across the internet is that Arisa's gun is strong with a capital S. Granted, it's basically her only damage dealing ability. Her shift doesn't deal damage. Her E doesn't deal damage. Her right click—I don't even know if it does damage. If it does, it's it's not very much. So she's got to have some damage dealing ability. So it makes sense that her gun will be a little bit on the strong side, considering, like, you know, not even her ult deals damage. So she's got to have some way to actually get kills. But just her gun let her shoot for forever. It let her shoot forever. So now this magazine size has lowered from 200 to 150. So it's less of a big deal. She still, you know, has a big clip. 150 is a long time. That's like a good, just off the top of my head, I'm guessing a good, like, 10 or 15 seconds of non-stop shooting because before it took a long time to empty that clip now you know that seems like a pretty significant nerf but probably not really because a lot of the times and a lot of sort of pokey gameplay what ends up happening is you'll shoot a little bit and then you'll have sort of a break in the action as you run for a health pack and then during that time you reload so the only time this will actually matter is <laughs> during those fights when you when you run out of ammo when you use all 150 bullets and in a lot of fights you know that just won't happen if you're arisa running back to the point and suddenly a tracer turns the corner and you shoot her and you burn her down you're not going to take 150 bullets to do that it's just going to be you know 30 or 40 or however many and so in that situation it's just not going to make any difference this isn't a damage nerf this isn't a spread nerf not a refire rate nerf it's a magazine size so it's really only going to matter in those rare situations where you actually empty your clip and since her clip is so huge that's going to be you know relatively rare with Arisa. so it's, it's a very minor pretty minor nerf secondly her old cost got increased by 15 percent uh, so i guess they thought that was a little bit too powerful a little bit too accessible now it's it's kind of difficult to talk about these changes because Arisa's only been out for a couple days so the community hasn't really landed on whether she's super strong or super weak or what but apparently blizzard thinks she's a little bit on the strong side so i guess we'll have to just take that at face value and then when she gets to the main version of the game we'll be able to see you know if this holds up if, if she's balanced and if these changes were really warranted next up we have sombra with a very significant buff so first off her translocator cooldown was reduced from six seconds to four seconds that's a <laughs> pretty substantial buff basically by about 33 percent cut this will make her translocator way more effective in combat previously your translocator was more of like a get out of jail free card you sort of drop it you run behind enemy lines and then when you get into trouble you sort of duck out but when it's down to four seconds that means you can sort of use it to blink around the battlefield kind of like how tracer does or the way genji does with his dash i think they're trying to make sombra a little bit more aggressive a little bit less pokey and more kind of like a 
front line when she needs to be. You know, obviously Sombra doesn't want to be, you know, pushing the payload right alongside Reinhardt and Soldier all the time. But with this change to her translocator, which increases her mobility a bit, she can be more of a frontline skirmisher if she really wants to. So that will make her a bit more versatile. And the second buff, which is a big one, which uh, they change the, the voice activation distance when she enters and exits stealth to 15 meters. And this is, this is a big deal. Sombra is the least stealthy stealth unit in any game I've ever seen. Like, you come out of stealth and she's like, Kayomba. Did you miss me? Here I am. I'm Sombra. I'm sneaking around behind you. Surprise, you'll never see me coming. I'm Sombra. And so it didn't matter that she was stealthy. It didn't matter that she was invisible. The second she popped out of stealth, everyone knew, Kayonda, there she is. There's Sombra. But now since they changed the voice line activation, she can, you know, get behind, way behind enemy lines, come out of stealth, and people actually won't know she's there, as crazy as that sounds. And the cool thing about this, the thing that I really love, which is really excellent design, is they specifically say that the range on this activation is 15 meters. What else is 15 meters? Her right click. That way, really good summer players will know that you can use your right click distance to gauge whether or not you're actually in range of the stealth activation voice line. So, you know, if you're getting those right click to hack indicators, that means if you pop out of stealth, someone will know you're there. So you can take a couple steps back. You lose the little right click indicator and aha, now I'm totally safe. You know, assuming no one's behind me around the corner or whatever. So this, this is kind of like a really cool and clever way to use already existing game mechanics to facilitate stealth mechanics and make it easier to decide when you are or aren't in range of a stealth activation voice line. Next up, we have Winston's Barrier Projector. The cooldown now starts when the barrier is placed instead of when it ends. And I'm, I kind of have to wonder, there's two ways that we can interpret this. One, it's Blizzard says, you know what, Winston is weak, let's make him stronger. So let's, let's, let's buff his projection barrier. Which is possible, you know, that's a, that's a possible interpretation. The second possibility, which I personally think is more likely, is the consistency route. I think that what Blizzard is trying to do is make game mechanics more consistent across the board. Because right now there are three characters that can emit a projection barrier. That is Winston, Symmetra, and Orisa. Reinhardt has a barrier, of course, but his is channeled. You have to like keep it on. The others, you press a button, it's there, and you can go do other stuff without worrying about it. Now, currently, in the current version of the game, Winston's cooldown does not start until after it's destroyed. In contrast, Orisa and Symmetra's cooldown start the second you use them. So what I think that they're doing is they're trying to make this mechanic, that is a, a, a projected barrier, consistent across all characters. I don't think it's really about a balance for this. Obviously, this is a this is a buff to Winston, so Winston players can enjoy this. But what I think this is, is I think they're trying to make the game more consistent so that when you have a character who projects a barrier and you see, aha, this cooldown starts immediately, that way, when you go over to another character, they'll work the same way, and that makes it a little bit more intuitive. That makes the gameplay easier to understand, especially for newer players. So that's my guess. Uh, you know, I'm not really sure, but that's sort of my my gut reaction that I think it's I think it's a game design decision and you know if you compare this to Hearthstone <laughs> which is another Blizzard game the community in Hearthstone has always been a little bit frustrated that cards are not consistent across each other you have two cards that have the exact same mechanic but when it comes down to it they will function in different ways and people don't like that it's kind of it's kind of lazy game design in my opinion so I think that because Overwatch cares, you know, very, the Overwatch team cares very deeply about putting out a very polished and consistent game. I think that that's what they're going for. Next up is Zenyatta. Zenyatta got his alternate fire recovery reduced from one second to 0.6 seconds. You know, you, you hold right click and the orbs fire up and then you release right click and he just sort of sits, sits there for a million years being like, oh, did they hit? Let's, let's just do nothing and watch to see if I hit. Well, that's that's going to be reduced by about half. So luckily, his right click would be less of a, I guess, liability to use. But the big buff, the big one, is that Orb of Discord it now targets characters through barriers. It's possible this change was brought about because of Arisa, because with Arisa, we have one more barrier added to the game. With the Winston buff, the barriers are going to be around more frequently. So if there are, if there's another character with a barrier, and another character who has a barrier just got that barrier buffed. 
I'm guessing they were like, all right, Zenyatta, we got to throw you some love. So let's give you a Discord orb that can go through enemy barriers, which makes him way, way more powerful because Zenyatta, a lot of times, is just a, a mobile orb of Discord distributor, like a dis uh, dispensing machine. So being able to do that, being able to punch through barriers makes him far, far stronger. It is a significant buff. So we might actually see Zenyatta in the meta. This is especially true since Anna might actually be coming out of the meta with these nerfs and with the buffs to all these dive heavy characters like Winston, Sombra, we might actually see more of a stealthy, aggressive, flanking dive type comps come out and Zenyatta really favors those sort of compositions because he could just throw an orb of harmony on a somber or a Winston who is way too far away for like a Lucio or a Mercy. So with these changes, I don't know if it's the case, but with these changes, we might see the return of the true flank heavy, sneaky heavy dive team comp, which would be exciting because those 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 comps are kind of like the antithesis of the tank meta, which is very slow, stable, high health no kills and the dive team comp is aggressive fast um lots of kills lots of damage it makes the gameplay much more exciting so overall i like these changes i like pretty much every single change it makes the game more consistent it nerfs characters who are a little bit too strong it um buffs characters who are a little bit too weak and it shifts the game a little bit from the let's just not move and be really tanky and have lots of health and shields and healing towards let's be really aggressive and mobile and get lots of kills and do lots of cool stuff and have lots of damage. So kudos to Blizzard. I'm really interested to see how these changes affect the game. I'm really looking forward to them coming live because this, <laughs> I honestly feel like this is my favorite PTR balance change so far. I love all these changes. They do such cool things for the characters. They fix a lot of problems that have been sort of existing for a long time. So hats off to you, Blizzard. I'm really looking forward to seeing these in the game. So thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed my video, please like and subscribe. Also, if you hit that like button and you come to this video, you will automatically be entered for a weekly giveaway for a $50 gift card. So be sure to hit that comment button, hit that like button and subscribe as well. So thank you for watching. Dabacab out.